They can't be too far. Search the entire floor. The sound of cubicles and desks being thrown about echoed in the empty floor. Papers flew everywhere, chairs were strewn about, and the manic grunts of Nomus tore through all sorts of equipment as if they were nothing but butter. You were hidden in a small hallway out of their sight, with your mouth covered by a gloved hand, and your body held in somebody's arms. You stilled in their hold. The one night you decided to stay back at the agency to get ahead with some paperwork had to be the night something incredible happened. You were dressed rather casually for an office setting, considering that it was after hours, and there wouldn't have been any judgement from nobody when you changed out of your usual stiff outfit. Getting ahead was one of your priorities, and seeing that you had no plans, you thought tonight would have been the best opportunity to move forward with a few items outstanding. That was until you heard what sounded like a crash a few floors down, like glass smashing apart. How did I end up here? You thought, panicked, glancing as best as you could towards the man that held you. His deep voice whispered in your ear, shushing you quietly with an odd sense of ease. You felt his body shift as if he was peering around the corner listening to the grunts and bellows of the creatures that tore through the office floor. Suddenly, one of them turned towards his direction, hissing loudly, before you felt a jolt from his grip. You felt your body lift from the ground, your mouth still covered as you began to soar down the hallway. Don't lose them! cried the voice from earlier in the distance, the sound of the Nomus's feet slamming against the hard floor, echoing behind you. As if it all happened in one fell swoop, still in the arms of this hero, the both of you maneuvered into the next open door available, shutting it from behind you. Now in the dark, still in his hold, you heard the thunderous footfalls of the large creatures rush past you, followed by another pair of feet that seemed to stop in front of the door. You felt the hands against your mouth and your body tighten, signaling silence on your part. One quiet moment passed, holding your breath apprehensively, before the patter of feet left your presence outside, disappearing into the distance. You stood in the dark, your eyes now adjusting to find that the both of you were inside the resident's supplies closet. The small inbuilt shelves around you were covered with all sorts of stationery and supplies required for the work on your floor, at least, but then you noticed, in the cramped space, two large and impressive wings that looked uncomfortable where they were. What made you think to stay back after hours? Not a smart move there. The gloved hand slowly released itself from your mouth as did the arm that wrapped around your waist. You turned to find the pro-hero Hawks standing before you his wings slightly flapping against the shelves and causing some items to shake. A sigh escaped from his lips as he tried to contain his wings, causing them to close in on you. Mm, bit of an oversight hiding in here too. <laughs> I guess laying low's the plan now. What's going on? Hawks' eyes shifted to yours, filled with confusion. You held your arms together to keep yourself from trembling too much from both the fear and the adrenaline that coursed through your veins. We just need to lay low for a while. They may give up on this floor. He answered. You looked at him with slight suspicion. It was too vague of an answer to be reassuring, especially with the size of those creatures that charged into the office floor. Seriously, Hawks? You whispered through your teeth. Who are they? And why are you here? You were met with a wag of his finger and a lazy smile. Hey, remember, call me Kago. He reminded. I may be in this outfit, but I'm still the same guy at the gala. And keep your voice low. I'm not sure if these Nomus have sensitive hearing. You noticed his wings shivered very slightly while he seemed to be concentrating on its movements. Sounds like they're on the other side of this floor. 
Yu peered up at the pro-hero while he seemed to investigate, as if he had some sort of telepathy. Ever since that gala meet, both he and yourself had texted a few times. Nothing more, though. You figured as much, considering he was the current number two hero in the ranks. He may have had a very busy schedule, but for him to be here of all places, when all of this went down, it made you think. Did you know they were coming? You asked, slightly hesitant. I got word of the League searching for potentials, and this building was one of their targets. I was hoping that no one would be here, you know? Collateral, civilians, like you. I'm not a civvy, you corrected before you heard a low chuckle erupt from his throat. <laughs> okay, you're a local, he corrected again. You were going to protest before you pulled back, bumping into his large wings that encircled you. True, you were more of a local hero than anything else. You felt more comfortable that way, to stay close to neighbouring areas where you knew the streets well. It never crossed your mind to go any bigger. But I envy that, he continued. You kind of have it a little easier. To assume that hero work was easy was a bit of a stretch. You stared at him incredulously at the statement before you quickly assessed what he meant. Being pro-hero had its perks, but it probably had its long list of responsibilities to be met to the greater society, you thought. You haven't answered me earlier. You mumbled, trying to revert the conversation back to the point you started with. No, I did, he retorted lazily. No, I mean, I know why, but you never told me who. That guy outside, he looked like twice from the League, right? Hawks's lips pulled to the side, almost grimacing. You waited for his response, but reading his face made you wonder if he was attempting to search for an answer to something in his mind. He then let out a long-drawn sigh, rubbing the back of his neck nonchalantly. Yeah, that's right. You're pretty perceptive, aren't you? He commented while his lazy eyes met yours. It's my job, really. I'm the eyes in this agency. At least whenever I'm on patrol, you admitted, although most of your days were pretty boring patrolling with the occasional petty criminal every now and then, it never really exercised the full extent of your quirk. Still, it was paid work, and something that you excelled at. And you stayed back here because… questioned Hawks, his eyes now curious. I had reports to complete. Any observations I make, I document them with the agency. I thought I could get a few days' worth of work out of the way. <laughs> I never took you for the working type. Only when I need to be, you corrected. I could have had some easy days ahead of me this week. Uh, now, isn't that the life? Hawks leaned back into one of the shelves causing some of his wings to contract closer in, pushing you further towards him in the process. In the darkness of the closet, you could only see the faint outline of his wings, but not him. It was difficult to make out exactly where he was in this tiny space, however stepping closer towards him due to his wings gave you a gauge when you felt your shoes lightly tap against his boots. You found yourself mere inches from his person his arms crossed while his head was turned towards the door, still listening out for anyone, or anything, outside. As he did, you could now see the faintest outline of his goggles in view. He looked concerned, but you could also see there was something deeper in that furrowed brow and those piercing eyes. It reminded you of the gala night again, how he went about everything with intention, but made it look effortless doing so, even taking you off guard. It made it difficult to concentrate on observing and assessing situations. 
Shaking your head, you turned back to him, pushing your thoughts to the back of your mind. Hey, if they were looking for potentials, why now when it's after hours at the office? You asked, catching Hawks' attention, but not taking him from his current position. I mean, unless they were intending to only locate information, there'd normally be no one here at the office. Wait, there'd normally be no one? Except you decided to stay, after hours, alone, spoke Hawks, ending your sentence. I have a theory you have a mole or a double agent in the agency, relaying information somehow. If not, someone from the outside who frequents the office knows what the going-ons are around here. Now it all pieced together. The conversation earlier made some sense to you despite Hawks' vague responses. They were after you. A potential? What did this even mean? All of the questions that bounced around in your mind only drew attention to your attention to detail. Did you not notice anyone strange in the agency to pick up on this yourself? The thought that your observational skills may had been lacking only gave you a heavy feeling in your stomach. So much for being a hero. You thought with distaste. You then spotted Hawks shift in his position, causing his wings to clamor in closer and push you into him, his arms grabbing hold of your body once more. Falling onto his chest, she felt the warmth of his body inside his jacket, and your cheeks flushed from the sudden impact. He raised a finger to his lips, signaling for silence before he wrapped his wings around you closer. Only he was able to peer through them from above, watching the door, until you heard slow and heavy footfalls outside. The grunts and growls of these nomus returned, causing you to raise a hand to your mouth as if it would ease you to be silent. Hawks continued to watch the door, listening in on the footsteps outside and the curdling noises of the Nomus as they languidly walked past. You felt him almost hold his breath while he continued to watch. Eventually, after a breathless moment, the footsteps seemed to have disappeared and were nowhere near the closet door. A relieved sigh exhaled from Hawks' lips as he looked down at you in his arms. A crooked smile soon crossed them. <laughs> I see you made yourself comfortable. He teased with a lazy grin. The same grin he displayed at the gala while you both kept each other company. Could I get another kiss for good luck's sake? A slight pout crossed your lips instead. One, I have no choice. You replied, eyeing his wings that encased you inside. And two, not the time. Oh, so if there was a time you would? He remarked. You didn't respond, thinking it better to not give him any more ammunition than he already had. But you couldn't help but smile back, trying to contain it as best as possible. Until... <laughs> Pulled from its hinges, the door revealed a Nomu by its entrance, its high-pitched snarl echoing through the halls. Hawks gripped onto you as he used his wings to protect you before he swung them outwards, pushing against the Nomu. And then you were both running. He released you only to be able to grab your wrist and drag you from behind, running through the office halls. The thunderous steps rumbled from behind as the Nomus growled and snarled at your heels. It wasn't long until you felt the strong tug of Hawks' arms before he grabbed you again, taking flight as best as he could through the large office floor. What are you doing? Go after them! Yelled twice from behind, his voice echoing through the halls. Both yourself and Hawks turned to find only the Nomus chasing behind you but not him, before you turned your gaze ahead in his flight path. Kago! You yelled, 
catching his attention as his flight took them towards the large windows. Hold on, he instructed as you felt him increase his speed. You squinted your eyes before you felt his body twist, crashing his wings into the windows and smashing his way through. The descent from the 47th office floor felt weightless. For a moment, after the shock of impact from the glass. You were released from Hawks's grip, slipping away from him as the both of you fell. Within this moment of weightlessness, your eyes darted around. There was nothing around you to help with the descent. No equipment, no obstructions, nothing of the sort. You calculated the drop, how long, and how fast the both of you would experience before you hit the concrete pavement below. You observed the injuries Hawks sustained, and also the state of his being, trails of blood flying from one of his maroon wings drenching his feathers. Formulating the best possible outcome, your quirk kicked in, knowing now that the only solution after going through all the variables was to wake Hawks. You reached out for him again, grabbing onto his wrist before you pulled yourself into him. His wings flapped lifelessly around you, noticing that his eyes were shut, most likely from the shock of breaking through thick glass, you assumed. Kago, wake up! You yelled. You pulled up to his face and grabbed hold of it, the sound of his wings flapping beside the both of you filling your ears. His eyes slowly peered open as the both of you continued to descend faster towards the pavement. And as if time had stilled for a moment, you heard the ruffle of his feathers open up. He winced in pain as he shook whatever injury there was on his wings, grabbing hold of your hands in his. With a weak grin, he looked in your concerned eyes before his arms grabbed you again. <sighs> Thanks, Dove. He quietly spoke before you felt the inertia of his wings take flight. Hold tight. Twisting in the air, he was able to balance and soar away from the office building, holding you in a bridal carry through the city. The cries of the Nomus were left behind the both of you as you wrapped your arms around Kago's neck to support your weight. This felt the same as the Gala, being escorted by the number two hero, but his face winced in pain with every flap of his wings. <sighs> We'll need to find a safe place for you. Ugh. Hawks spoke through gritted teeth. And I've got just the place. It won't be smart to send you back to yours. You nodded in agreement. All you could do was watch as Hawks flew through the city with a mildly injured wing. Wherever we go, I guess I owe you. You started leaning your face inwards away from the wind. I owe you some luck. <laughs> you owe me plenty.